Okay. So, all right, good, good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> Lovely to see you all here today. First of all, uh, I would like to share, there are way 25 contributors, you can see. Uh, I was there. <clears throat> Sorry for my best voice. Uh, I have found there an exciting thing. Uh, do you know a block team can be make without writing a single line of CSS code? Yeah. 2023, block team has no CSS code at all. Even no PHP code, all right? Isn't it awesome or cool? Yeah, I think both. So if you want to make a functional and <clears throat> beautiful block team, uh, you have to be a master in theme design, right? So I'm curious to know who has the experience with this team development or customization in this room. Could you say hi to me? Excellent. Lots of known faces, by the way. So I'm trying to talk with you to go through in that part of the theme design so that you can understand the theme design even better. And after completing this session, you will be able to start your next block team development more efficiently. And if you have a, a classic team, you can also convert your classic team into a hybrid team by adding team JSON. So what is team JSON? Team JSON is a configuration JSON file. Uh, it's um, for controlling team styles and block settings. This file is located in the root directory of the team. Um, it works with both classic team as well as the block team, but uh, it doesn't work with the classic editor. <clears throat> so just remember, the minimum required version of WordPress uh, is 5.8. Otherwise, you have to activate the Gutenberg plugin. So before going in depth into jumping to theme JSON, you know, uh, Java is, uh, JSON is uh, come from JavaScript. Uh, it's a lightweight data format for storing and transporting data. The data separated by values, uh, oh, sorry, objects and name value pairs. And here, data separated by values, colorless all the objects, or no, Square bracket, hold this address list. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we are seeing what um, exactly looks like a theme JSON file. Here, a little bit of stuff schema, is version settings, is styles, custom templates. There are almost uh, seven sections, mainly seven sections. I rearrange those uh, seven sections into three groups. Group number one has the schema and version. And the group number two has the most important and uh, essential two parts, settings and styles. And the last one has the custom templates, template parts, and patterns. But today, we are mainly talking about styles and settings. All right? So what settings does in theme JSON? Uh, settings may actually does two things, controlling block editor and individual blocks. And the second is create CSS preset with value. All right? Uh, here you can see the stuff inside the settings. Uh, there are almost nine settings categories. Later, we're going to see more examples on this. So don't worry. <coughs> so what does uh, in styles in theme JSON? It's very easy. Styles for applying styles to the website and individual blocks. Also, there are uh, seven styles categories. So this part is more important because uh, it's very important to understand the difference between settings and styles. Because uh, you might get confused while you are right on this. You can see the uh, similar categories, right? Uh, in settings, blocks, border, color, spacing, and same things go here also. So it's very important to understand the difference, OK? So in general, we control options-related elements and generate CSS preset in settings. On the other hand, we control design-related elements. OK, right? In, color, in settings, we, uh, we define color palettes in settings. On the other hand, 
we use those different color in styles. I think you guys understand this. Okay. So let's dive into some more examples. Let's how it works in practical. Okay, color. Now we are going to set the color pillars inside the color of the settings section. All right. Each color has three key value pairs: name, slug, and color. All right. The color value can be any valid CSS color value, such as color name, RGBA, or hexa. Uh, yeah, it's a, a, a string. Is the output word to sparse this JSON data and create CSS preset for each color, uh, for each color, and add them to the body selector. When you add this one on the theme JSON, you can see this on from the, I think, um, console. So next, <clears throat> also you can see the your uh, edit color to the site editor color choose options, all right? Now, how we can apply those defined color? Uh, here, we have set it color inside the settings as background and text color. Is the output WordPress parse the JSON data as well and add them to the body selector and uh, Another selector. Okay, you might notice on the last slide, all right, the color at the top level of the settings, sorry, on the styles, it will affect only the, uh, sorry, it will affect the full site, okay, and in, in the, uh, the color inside the block only affect this name block type. Uh, I think it's very cool, and the same thing goes for the settings as well. Just remember this one. Okay, now we are going to talking about very important thing. Uh, by default, Gutenberg disabled most uh, uh, few, a few uh, options like border, color, spacing, typography, this and this stuff. But we can enable those options by adding true to appearance tools. Uh, otherwise, uh, your um, editing will not affect your site. You have to first of all set true to appearance tools inside settings. So this is very important. So now we are talking about the spacing. How to uh, control spacing like margin pairing options without writing a single line of CSS code. So by default, WordPress uh, provides uh, the seven, uh, seven spacing presets. You can also see this is spacing, is spacing, uh, is preset as margin fading in the site editor, control options. We can also use those uh, default spacing preset as um, <coughs> spacing size like margin fading value in style section. But if you want to create or um, make your custom preset, then you have to set, uh, first of all, you have to set zero to spacing scale inside this spacing of settings, right? This zero will omit all the defined spacing, default spacing presets, okay? Then, now you can set this kind of stuff. This is your um, custom presets. Each custom preset has three key value pairs, size, slug, and name. Uh, this should be chronological. Uh, and then, as the output, what is then those presets and add them to the body selector? All right. Also, you can see this, uh, your added custom spacing affected in the site editor. Okay, now we are going to about, uh, talking about typography. You might want to add your custom font family to your theme. Yeah, you can add your custom font families inside the font families under the settings uh, typography. Each font family has four key below pairs. Um, there you can see font family name and slug. And if you want to add your downloaded local font, you can set it in font face. Uh, I think you can guess this font face is like similar to CSS uh, import font face, right? Okay. It will create this preset <coughs> as well. And also you can see these your integrated fonts available to the site editor. Font choose options. Okay, now you also add your custom font sizes. 
Uh, there are also only two QVLPS, slice and slug, and it will create this preset. You also see this stuff available in the site editor also. So how now how to apply those defined typography to your site? Very easy. We have added those generated CSS into the style section of typography, uh, font family, font size. As the output word response this JSON data and adds this stuff here. Okay. Now we are going to explore more exciting thing. Schema inversion. Which schema version do we need to choose? No confusion. We have to choose the correct version number two. If anyone used version number one, then what was recommend you to go to two? All right. So this is very important. What actually does is just an schema. This schema will help you to write in theme JSON more efficiently by providing features like autocomplete, uh, quick suggestion tooltip, and the mainly validating data. So let's show how a schema help you write in theme JSON. When you add this schema, you can see the error in the version. Also, you can see the uh, auto suggestion, all right? Isn't it cool? Yeah, of course, you have to choose a um, very good ID. I, I think free one. Visual Studio Code will help you to get this one. So after that, I have, now I can say, you don't have to remember all the things, right? Because schema will help you to how to write in themes this one. Isn't it cool? Yeah, I think it's cool. So guys, uh, I'm going to near to end before then. A quick tip for you, your changes in theme JSON might take so long to update in browser. I think it's maybe a caching issue. Uh, it will resolve if you set true to WP debug or skip debug. I think it will resolve your issue. So that's all for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed my session very well, and start, uh, you are ready to start your next block theme. So let's make it happen. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.